Now we're going to go back to the full linear equation, including a forcing term. At the start, we said that the solution of this problem has a homogeneous part, which we learned is a fundamental matrix times an arbitrary constant vector. To solve the forced problem, we also need to find a particular solution that includes the F. So how do we do that? We're going to go back to an idea that worked for scalars, which is to just try a particular solution in the form of capital X times not a constant, but an unknown function. So when we put this into the ODE, what happens? The derivative of XP just uses the product rule. And then that equals A times XP plus F. But X is a fundamental matrix, so X prime is just equal to A times X. And that means the first term on the left must cancel out the first term on the right. All we're left with is X times C prime equals F which, if we multiply on the left by x inverse, we can solve for c prime. So if we choose c this way, we get a particular solution. In other words, if we can integrate this expression, then we'll get c of t, and that tells us what x of p should be. That leads to the following theorem. The general solution of the forced problem has the homogeneous part plus x of t times the integral of what we just found. For an initial value problem, there is no arbitrary constant anymore, so we can substitute for that using the initial condition. What we get is capital X of T times capital X at zero inverse times the initial value. And then it's easiest to replace the integral with a definite integral. Finally, if the matrix A is actually constant, then we know that the matrix exponential is a fundamental matrix. And if we use that, we get the formula x of t is e to the ta times x naught plus integral from 0 to t of the exponential of t minus s times a all times f of s ds. Since the system variation of parameters formula is so intense to use by hand, I thought I would do it in Mathematica just to get a flavor of it. This is a three-dimensional system. It's actually motivated by an example in the first section of this uh, chapter in my notes. So this is a home heating example where you have basement, main area, and attic, and they're transferring heat between each other as well as with the environment. So here's our three by three matrix in the system. And if I find the exponential of that matrix, as you see, it is possible, but it's quite a mess. I'll try to make it a little bit easier by just picking some numerical values for those constants. These are the rate constants between different compartments. And now if we evaluate the matrix exponential with those values, it's still pretty long, all right, but it's, I guess, comprehensible. Nevertheless, let's go ahead and this is the forcing vector. So in the problem, there's a term for heating the main floor. So I'm just putting in a sine function to heat the main floor. And I'll give it some 
starting values. And then here is the variation of parameters formula. So in Mathematica, you use a dot for matrix products or matrix vector products. So there's the homogeneous part. And then here's the particular part expressed as an integral. Remember, capital X is what I defined as the matrix exponential. So we ask it for the solution. And there it is. All right. You see that it thinks that the solution might be complex, but in fact, the imaginary part is extremely small. So we can make this a little simpler by forcing it to make it exactly real. But nevertheless, let's just go ahead and plot this solution. Right, so you see that um, over time, the uh, basement and attic are getting comparable to the outside temperatures, and that's dragging down the interior temperatures. So the details of this model are not that important. It's just to show that this is possible. On the other hand, to make a graph of the solution like this, it really is enough to use a numerical solution in the first place, and the real utility of the formula most of the time is for theory. Here's that formula again for the case of a constant matrix. It actually has a very nice interpretation. This first term here, that's the homogeneous term, we also call that the free response. It's what happens if you start the system off in a state and then you let it go without any more interference. The integrand is actually an impulse response. The impulse amount is f of s, and then that's evolved using the exponential from time s to t. And finally, the integral itself is just the sum of all those impulses over the whole past from the perspective of time t. Every linear solution is just composed of the sum of these parts.